This man is in court to face a judge. You know, I'm sorry for my actions. Did he do what he's been accused of? I miss Erica, my wife. Terrible. <laughs> or do they have the wrong man? Beautiful Erica Crippen Crosby, a young mom, had vanished. She would never leave her kids. Not reported missing for eight days. I looked at my husband and I said, something happened. Where was she? Was she dead or alive? Would authorities get to her in time? Erica was a very loving, funny child. Loved to play practical jokes on people. She was very energetic. She was an awesome mom. When Erica got together with Kyle Crosby, she was a smart, sassy, single mom to five-year-old Amira with the goal of becoming a doctor. Erica and Kyle knew each other from high school and reconnected years later on social media. At first, their relationship was a whirlwind romance. To me, their relationship was like a Cinderella thing. Yeah. Like she lost her goal, her, her slipper, and he found it, and he's pinch trying to... Erica was crazy about Kyle, and her family loved him too. We love Kyle. Yeah, we did. We, we took him in as one of our own. Mm -hmm. Like he was like a, a son to me. But not everyone was a fan. It was just this vibe I got from him. But I felt like I was the only one that felt that way, so I kept it to myself. Over time, Erica would confide only in her best friend, Amiris Torres, about the troubles brewing in the relationship, like his drug problems, past criminal record, and fights which at times turned physical. I always had a feeling against him for what he always put Erica through, how she used to cry, and but that's her partner, so I still have to love him and I still have to support her. Despite the problems, Erica and Kyle eventually got married and pregnant. Life was perfect. The white picket fence and the puppy. That's yes. all they was missing. Yeah. Erica and Kyle found out they were having twins. The pregnancy was hard. One twin didn't survive. When Kaylee was born, she was their princess, their miracle child. Kaylee was the one that actually survived, so she had to protect her. And she tried her best. It seemed like they were living a fairy tale, but behind closed doors, problems were escalating. Police had been called to the house for domestic disturbances. Erica never pressed charges. But she did put Kyle in rehab. And while he was there, Erica wrote him saying she was close to being done. She wasn't happy at all. When they visited, she was just dropping him off. She was just tired. They like... became distanced quickly. Mm -hmm. They started going apart from each other. Mm -hmm. The family hoped it was just regular relationship growing pains. But they weren't. And it would be the tragic events on New Year's Eve which would soon shatter the worlds of all involved. December 30th, Kyle and Erica went out to celebrate, putting their troubles to the side for an evening of fun. The next night was New Year's Eve, a time always spent with family. But oddly enough, Erica's Aunt Sonia got two calls from Kyle that afternoon. He said that he was letting Erica go out for the evening and could I watch the kids? And I thought it was strange. And I was like, Erica's leaving, New Year's, not being with her kids. And he calls back again about 10 minutes later. Everything's fine, Aunt Sonia, I let Erica go out. I'm just gonna stay in for tonight. Throughout that New Year's Eve night, Erica's uncle Kanye said Kyle called several times looking for her. He had been calling, but getting no answer. And strangely enough, there were no texts or calls to anyone else either. No Happy New Year, no I saw you Happy New Year's, I love you, nothing. An entire week went by and no one talked to Erica other than by text, and the text didn't even sound like her. This wasn't how she speaks. The slang and abbreviating, that wasn't her. Things were about to unravel. When Erica's seven-year-old daughter Amira wasn't picked up from school, officials went to investigate and called Mount Laurel Police. Kyle was there with their three-month-old child who was at the time alone in a bathtub in a soiled diaper, still clothed. The officer immediately suspected that there was improper child care going on. Cops discovered Erica wasn't there, and Kyle's answers to her whereabouts raised suspicions. He gave conflicting statements about where she was and when was she last seen, when will she return. And why hadn't Kyle reported Erica missing in the last eight days? 
Very quickly, it went from a missing persons case to something far more serious. We treated this as a potential homicide investigation within 24 hours of, of Erica being reported missing. The stunning news shocked Erica's family. They immediately started searching for her through the harshest of conditions. The ground was frozen. Everything was frozen. Yes. We found all different types of bones. We collected them, gave that to the police. We didn't give up. Neither did Mount Laurel police, who soon went to arrest Kyle Crosby on child endangerment charges. When they arrived, the couple's car was gone. Kyle was on the run. A bolo, a be on the lookout, was put out. As everyone searched, both cops and Erica's family were uncovering more incriminating details. He had gone into Camden, New Jersey to purchase drugs. He picked up a female in Camden, brought her back to the apartment, and partied with this female. We interviewed her. She indicated that he told her that she could go into the wife's wardrobe and take whatever she wanted. You would think you wouldn't do that if your wife was coming back. We went over to the house, and the house was destroyed. Within days, investigators were alerted to Kyle's whereabouts and tried to pull him over on a traffic stop. But Kyle wasn't going to give up easily. A pursuit was on, first by car, then on foot. Obviously, he knew what he did and where our investigation was leading. The dramatic chase ended with Kyle in custody on a child endangerment charge. But cops were about to learn Kyle could run, but he could not hide. 26-year-old married mother of two, Erica Crippen Crosby, had been missing and feared dead. Many, including police, strongly believed her husband, Kyle Crosby, was responsible. We knew it was him from the, from the very first day. After being on the run for days in Erica's car, Kyle was taken into custody on a child endangerment charge. When cops got a search warrant and opened the trunk, they found more than just a spare tire and a jack. We opened the trunk, and there are some objects in there which are not normal household objects. Uh, a shovel, a bag of cement, and fortunately for us, unfortunately for Kyle, a receipt from a Home Depot. The receipt led investigators to surveillance video of Kyle coming out of the store with the items found in the trunk. But where was Erica? Cops had no idea, but they had enough circumstantial evidence to charge Kyle Crosby with her murder. The cops believe someone else also had knowledge of what happened to Erica, Kyle's mother, Joe Crosby. Joe Crosby had way more to do with this. Investigators realized there had been communication between Joe and Kyle in the early morning hours of New Year's Eve day, the same day Erica's communication with her family fell silent. Around 7 a.m., police believe Joe Crosby went to the apartment to watch the kids while Kyle ran errands. Allegedly, at one point, Joe told Erica's Aunt Sonia, Ah, uh, you know, it's not looking good for Erica. By the time cops went to talk with Joe Crosby, she had deleted several of the texts between her and Kyle. Little did she imagine they would be recovered. What they revealed only heightened the suspicion. Joe wrote, Please do not touch her in any way or form. 13 minutes later, Kyle sent a message that indicated he was not that stupid. We felt that she was somehow complicit in assisting him or attempting to assist him in perhaps how and when to try to dispose of the body. Cops arrested Joe Crosby and charged her with hindering apprehension and tampering with physical evidence by destroying records. Now, two Crosbys were in custody, but Erica's family was still desperate to find her body. All we were begging was to know where she was. She deserved a proper burial. Then a break. Everything investigators would need to know would be found in Erica's own car. That's where really the case breaks. In the vehicle's GPS system. They were able to uh, identify about 8,500 points. We called them breadcrumbs, stops that Kyle had made while driving the car. Cops used the tracker to narrow the number down drastically and hone in on a more concentrated area. Well, he was able to tell us that he went, uh, spent some time in Maryland, 
and it appeared there was no reason for him to have stopped there based on the rural setting. And allegedly, Kyle went into the car's GPS and manually typed in notes for certain spots. Cops found notations like IDK for I don't know and maybe. Were these clues to where Kyle could have buried Erica's body? And I don't know or maybe, what else could it mean? Investigators searched and searched. Then, more than two months after Erica went missing and 50 yards from the side of the road, they found a body bound with electrical cord under a pile of branches and tree limbs. It was Erica. The way Erica was found indicated to me that she died a very violent death. With her hands tied behind her back to her feet, hog tied, her mouth and nose were, were duct taped shut. Erica had also been strangled. When the family heard her body had been found, there were mixed emotions. Now that she's found, that's a relief. Mm -hmm. Then like the next day is like, oh, she's dead. She's not coming back. Mm -hmm. Then you're sad. I didn't know how to feel. She loved him and she did, he did that to her. If she was dead, why did you duct tape her mouth? Kyle never said exactly what happened that night, but cops believe he was high on drugs when they got into an argument. And unfortunately, that argument, unlike the ones before, ended with deadly results. When I started cleaning her apartment out, I was going through all of the complaints and all of the calls, the 911s. I just, I was sick. Like, oh my God, it was just so many of them. Like, all this was happening and we didn't even know it. Kyle ended up taking a plea deal, which meant he would spend 31 years behind bars, not eligible for parole until he was in his mid-50s. Erica's best friend, Amaris, didn't think it was a strict enough sentence. If New Jersey had the death penalty, I would have rathered him die. 31 years, no, it's not enough. And as part of the deal, the charges against Kyle's mom, Joe Crosby, were dropped. She should have gotten jail time. This is your daughter-in-law, the mother of your grandchild. And she got off with nothing. The day came when Kyle Crosby was going to be officially sentenced. Families from both sides were there. Emotions were high. And Kyle was going to speak publicly for the first time. You know, I'm sorry for my actions. The actions I committed were not planned out. And the after effect caused me to panic. I was scared. And I acted in unexpected ways. Lasting impression is left an indelible mark on my heart. I miss Erica, my wife, terribly. And not only do I love my wife and our children, but her family as well as mine. My in-laws always treated me as if I was a member of the family. And hopefully one day you will find that your hearts forgive me. As Kyle's family left the courtroom, Crime Watch Daily tried to get answers from Joe Crosby. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Get a reaction to the verdict? Anything you want to say to the victims, their family? Why did you help your son? Now, Erica's family is left to deal with and heal from their loss. The only thing I have is memories. And I hope that those memories I have, I can, you know, always share that with her kids. Since her murder, Erica's oldest daughter, Amira, has gone to live with her biological father. And Sonia and Kanye have adopted Kaylee and are focused on raising her like Erica would have. Okay, fine. 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 Yay! <laughs> While keeping her spirit alive. Erica has shared um, with me that if anything should ever happen to her, she wanted to be cremated put into lockets so that her daughters can wear them around their neck to have them closer to their hearts so that she can be with them forever. The family misses Erica and wonders why she stayed in that tumultuous situation. She wanted to create that image, that, that family life. I think she was a point in her life that she needed that. She just did it with the wrong person. And their advice to others in a similar situation? Be honest with your family. There are signs in the beginning of every relationship. And if you don't act on those signs, they're not, people don't change. And don't be afraid to leave.